North Dakota Politics on KX. Senator Merrill Pepcorn, a Democrat representing District 44, joins us from Fargo. Senator Pepcorn, thanks for being here. Josh, glad to be here. I'm going to start off with the fact that I'm a member of the Democratic Nonpartisan League Party. Ah. Very proud of those Nonpartisan League roots that uh, that uh, party was established back in the 19 teens yeah. and eventually merged with the Democratic Party. And it's a proud part of our history. But nonetheless, I'm happy to be sure. here, whatever the party may be. Well, to absolutely. Talk with you a Anytime bit. there's an opportunity for you to explain the Dem NPL, yeah, we welcome that. Well, especially when we talk about Dem dash NPL, because a lot of people don't know NPL stands for Nonpartisan League. But yeah. nonetheless, we're here fighting for the people, and that's our, that's our main job here in the, in the legislature. All right. Well, so the Senate approved a bill to give lignite coal power facilities a five-year tax holiday. Correct. Uh, instead, that tax would go towards lignite research. But you oppose this bill. Why? Let me go back just a little bit and the origins of the lignite coal industry in North Dakota, which was ushered into the state when Democratic Nonpartisan League Governor Art Link was the head of the state, was governor. And he ushered it in in a very mindful manner, uh, insisting that the land be reclaimed once this new resource that we had just discovered was we we're going to be able to turn it into energy. He was all for it, but also then made provisions for the companies to reclaim that land, which now they, of course, are very proud of doing. So there it is. That, and it wasn't that long ago. We haven't had, uh, you know, lignite as a resource. It's always been underground, but mm -hmm. we haven't been burning it to converting it to electricity, to energy for forever. So uh, now that it got up and running, it, was, it has served the state extremely well. Uh, we've been able to tax the industry, to s export the industry, uh, export the electricity that's generated at the Coal Creek Station, for example, to other states who have uh, paid the companies for the electricity, who've paid a decent tax to us here in North Dakota. Now, generally, all across the nation, coal is falling into disfavor. And so just generally speaking, and I'll talk a little bit more in detail in a bit if we have time, but just generally speaking, fall, uh, coal is falling into disfavor among the public, among the consumers, and people who have traditionally purchased our coal-fired electricity are, are not so anxious to do that anymore. And I'm concerned about the future if we keep investing in coal without looking at other forms of energy as well. But senators who support this bill say that's exactly the purpose of the tax holiday is to make lignite electricity, lignite-powered electricity, more competitive in what they call distorted markets. Well, that, and that is an argument, too. And I know one, well, w one of the reasons, one of the things they're going to do with this tax holiday, okay, it's a five-year exemption from the extraction tax on coal that's going to amount to about $100 million. And what is going to happen with some of that money, I asked the head of one of the coal uh, industry organizations, what, what are you going to do with this money that normally would go to the state in the form of a tax, you're going to have it now to spend. Are you going to spend it on salaries? Are you going to spend it on equipment upgrades? Uh, what are you going to spend it on? And he just explained it as well. Well, it's fungible. Now, I didn't know what fungible meant. Now, fungible means, you know, well, we can use it here and we can use it there. And to me, it means we can use it wherever we want, really without telling you what we're going to do with it. But what part of it is going to do is to subsidize, we'll subsidize the price of our coal to make it more competitive. When they offer it to bid into these power systems uh, to which we are, to which we are, uh, of which we are members, uh, other, other states and other energies are, are cheaper than what we're able to offer. One of the reasons that people aren't so anxious to buy it. We're going to use our state money to subsidize the price of our coal-fired energy to make it more acceptable on that open market that we participate in. So I've got, you know, like it or not, to me, that is a subsidy, that's state-supported uh, energy. So if not Lignite, what is the future energy for North Dakota? Well, you know, that's a good question. I will tell you also that a lot of the future of Lignite depends on the argument 
that we are going to be able to create cleaner coal. We're going to be able to participate in carbon sequestration. There have been some experiments with it. Um, there has been some progress in, you know, CO2 storage and perhaps potential uses, but largely it is unproven. And we are investing hundreds of millions of dollars. Not only do we have this $100 million tax holiday for the industry, but we are also investing another two, three, four hundred million dollars. It could be a half a billion dollars once all is said and done from this legislative uh, session investing in it. What I'm just afraid that even if we do produce, e at, at, at the best possible result, we would produce a clean coal, a carbon-free coal-fired coal energy. We still then have to convince the customer that yes, we use coal to produce it, but it's clean and you'll like it, so please buy it from us anyway. So there's and no guarantee. There's no guarantee. And I would like to see us looking to the future and at least invest part of this in renewables, wind, solar. Nuclear is not off the table right now, although me personally, I'm not a big fan of it. A lot of people aren't because, you know, it, it has its problems too. But without shutting down the coal mines like right now, without being aware of the people who work in these coal mines and, uh, and the power plants. We have to, to uh, contemplate their futures too as we also look to invest in these in renewables because that's All what right. people want. We yep. have to give them the goods. All right, Senator Merrill Pepcorn of the Democratic Nonpartisan League, thank you for being here. Stay tuned. Plenty more inside North Dakota politics after the break.